Hello again, this is Brian DeVore with the DeVore Realty Group and the Director of the Senior Division for Berkshire Hathaway Home Services California Properties. A lot of the work I do is with seniors and their families who are looking to make uh, transitions in their lives and trusts come into play quite a bit uh, and they're a very important part of the estate planning process. But unfortunately, people tend to make some mistakes when it comes to their trusts uh, and in fact there are seven big mistakes that people tend to make. Well, here to talk to us today about some of those mistakes and his webinars on how to avoid them is my friend Sandeep Varma. He is the founder and CEO of ATS Wealth Management. Sandeep, good to see you. How are you? Thank you, Ryan. Good to see you. Me and too. You, what an incredible job you're doing for the community by having this kind of service. So thank you, thank you for having us. Um, a little bit of background. Uh, so this is actually my 32nd year doing this. And for the last 20 years, we have specialized in educating people on their responsibility and liability of being a trustee. So everybody tells you to set up a living trust, but nobody tells you what to do with it afterwards. So we built a whole niche. So the name of the firm is Advanced Trustee Strategies, ATS, Wealth Management. And right now we actually have a, a lot of seminars going on all on Zoom. Every Wednesday uh, at 10 o'clock we have a seminar that starts from 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock called the seven biggest mistakes trustees often make. And this is our flagship seminar and this is one of uh, a five week course that we educate people on all aspects of being a trustee. You know, that gives you an idea yeah. what we have coming up. Um, I have to tell you, uh, given where we are with the real estate market, uh, one of the strategies that we're heavily involved in right now is called uh, Capital Gain Bypass Trust. And for all of your viewers, anyone who has a real estate property or a rental property that they're they know it's a great time to be selling, but are afraid of the capital gain tax. They should talk to you about how a capital gain bypass trust can be utilized to not only avoid the capital gain tax, but also the recapture of depreciation. It's a complicated strategy. It's not for everybody, but once you understand it, for a lot of people, uh, it may be a, a good fit. Yeah, I really enjoyed when you and I sat down and talked about it and you kind of laid out the, uh, how it all works. And my, my wheels started turning because I, a lot of my clients who I helped sell their homes in the last year or two have had capital gains tax situations. A lot of times they bought their home you know, 30, 40 years ago for $100,000. It's now worth a million and a half or whatever the situation is, but they don't want to be hit with those capital gains tax issues. And I know you said that um, the CRD is going to be part of your, your seminar series. So, you had mentioned there's a couple different series that you have working on and then and we'll talk maybe a little bit about maybe one or two of those mistakes that people are making but there's two different series you have going yeah so allow me to explain so the, the our flagship seminar the seven biggest mistakes trustees often make is a primer it basically teaches you what you don't know okay so it takes people from all walks of life doesn't matter where what stage of life you're at whether you have a trust you don't have a trust you're a trustee of mom and dad's trust or a neighbor's trust it takes everybody from ground zero, it educates them what they don't know. That's, that's our starting point. Then the following Thursday, we have the uh, advanced trustee workshop. Now the advanced workshop, and by the way, we use cartoon characters in our presentation. It's easy to digest. So in our first seminar, you deal with a, uh, characters by the name of Norman and Margaret Sample. And in the second series, the advanced workshop, we have Bob and Mary Sample. And Bob and Mary are, have two kids, and, um, and we show what happens if they both happen to pass away at the same time with a living trust. What happens? Goes over and show, it talks about the different areas of taxes on how it impacts us, not only capital gain, estate tax, uh, um, uh, income tax, and generation skipping tax. Uh, so it's, it's all it shows in that. Then chances of both people dying are kind of low. It can happen, but it's low. So Bob Sample this volunteers to pass away first. How oh, generous of him. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Mary becomes a widow, and then she has to do the AV division, and then we go through slow motion from a legal, from a tax, from a financial, what are the short-term, long-term consequences of all of these options. And it's a very interactive session, so it's a real eye-opener for a lot of people. And then, And then through the wizardry of Zoom, 
Bob is looking down from the heavens and he says, why do we do all this planning after I'm gone? So we bring Bob back to life and we look at what could be done while he was alive. So it kind of walks you through the whole thing and this whole thing takes place over a five-week course and, and part of the whole process is one of the session is on capital gain bypass trust on how that is used to look at all of your options in selling a rental property. So Bob and Mary have a rental property that they just don't want to be a landlord anymore because of their age and health. And so they look at exchanging, installment sales, selling it outright, and then capital gain bypass trust. What are some of the feedback that you've gotten from people who have gone through your series? Oh my gosh. Um, the feedbacks are usually like, I can't believe this, I didn't know all of this stuff. Uh, the perception in general is that once people set up a living trust, it's a magical document. Everything will take care of itself. And, and that's just not how it happens. So educating people in all aspects of it, the gratitude, the emails that I get afterwards saying, oh my God, I can't believe I had no idea about all of these other options that I didn't know about. Uh, I can't believe I never knew about these types of strategy. I have an attorney, I have a CPA, I have a financial advisor, but no one's ever put all of these things together like this. Yeah, and, and there's so much integration between all of it. Um, and I, I plug in a lot of times with financial planners and uh, state planning attorneys and so forth because you know, in so many situations, people aren't planning properly. You know, and then in, in the case you're talking about, people think they're planning properly and think everything is just ironclad, and it turns out it's not the case. So just tease us a little bit. What's one of the mistakes that people tend to make? So uh, I'll give you, um, this is mistake number four. Okay. So uh, if you're asking me for one, I'll go out of order. All right, no problem. <laughs> so mistake number four is what is called failure to follow the terms of the trust is the, is the mistake itself. And what that means is, number one, no two trusts are the same. So a lot of clients, they kind of get to that point. The average person sets up a living trust when they're 57, okay? So when they get to that age, they set up a living trust, they go to an attorney, and the number one thing that they're looking for is what's the cost of the trust? Because in their mind, it, they're all the same. So they, they get to an attorney and they set up a living trust and the attorney asks them a couple of questions saying, okay, the client says, okay, here's my money, I want my trust, set me up. And the attorney says, well, how many kids do you have? Oh, I have three kids. How would you like to leave your money to them? When I'm done, lump sum, I love them equally, a third, a third, a third. Oh, but not all in one shot. We'll give it to them when they're 30, 35, and 40. That should be enough. Okay. The attorney says, well, lump sum like that or an income stream over their life. Oh, no, 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 they can have all of it. Okay. Now, I'm exaggerating because this is really important. Okay, this is not a real case, I'm exaggerating. So let's say child number one is what we call the golden child. Really well to do. Brian, I have a feeling you're a golden child. <laughs> <laughs> a very successful, very well to do. They pass away and they have a large estate. Mom and dad's estate is all cash, comes into their estate. It increases the size of their estate and adds inheritance tax. Sister number two is 100% complete opposite. High credit card debt, can't make ends meet. The week you pass away is the week she files for bankruptcy. Oh boy. So the whole thing that's coming in, whether it's at age 30, 35, the fact that it's coming in like that, it goes to the creditors. Child number three has been fighting a lawsuit for many years secretly, and the week the lawsuit goes against him is the week you pass away. Now the whole thing is going on because, because most people, when they're setting up a living trust, they're concerned about probate, healthcare directive, power of attorney, and when it comes to distrib distribution, oh, I love Amico, and they can have it. This is the most important part, and people don't really understand what happens, because your trust actually begins when you die, not when you die. It doesn't end, and that's the perception. So what we recommend in that scenario is, instead of, and again, by the way, we're not lawyers. We are look at us as the, your architect of your financial. We come in and draft a, the strategy for the family, the master strategy, 
Then we bring in the attorney, the CPA, to execute the appropriate documents and things that are needed. And to the best of my knowledge, there are 34 different types of trust. Most people have only heard of one or two. And so you use the appropriate documents to do what is needed. So in that scenario that I just gave you, instead of having the trust go at 30, 35, 40, whatever the, the wishes are, you can have your living trust give birth to what we refer to it as a children's trust. And so brother number one, the golden child, instead of the money going into the estate and increasing the size of the estate, what can they do is have the asset go into a separate trust. He's the trustee, but it's not part of his estate. And because it came from your living trust, it also has a layer of protection built in for him. So it's not part of his estate for estate tax purposes. Sister number two had to file bankruptcy because your living trust gave birth to this new trust and everything went in there. It's not part of her estate. So it's, it's exempt from any bankruptcy or anything of that nature. And same thing for brother number three. Those assets are completely protected from lawsuits, divorce, bankruptcy, future inheritance tax. It is a really powerful tool, yet most trusts that we look at a third, a third, a third, love them equally. It happens all the time. So yeah. I hope I gave you a little bit yeah, into that was great. <laughs> Well, and that's obviously a big mistake. And if there are seven of them, people really need to attend and learn about this stuff and get planned and help their heirs understand what's going on. So you're, talk, you're, you're advertising this throughout the entire county, which is fantastic because people need to know about it. Um, so how can people tune in to your seminars, your webinar series? Well, thank you. Um, every Wednesday at 10 o'clock, we have the seven biggest mistakes trustees often make. If you go to ATSWealthManagement.com, uh, uh, all of our schedules are there. Uh, and if you like to go to the advanced workshop, uh, talk to my office, and if you've missed the trustee, they can kind of get you in, but they need a couple of things from you. Um, and so it's really that simple. It's, it's complimentary. It's being done from your living room. You don't have to drive anywhere in, in this environment. So I'm very excited about it. I'm very happy what we can do for clients. Great. And your information has been on the screen uh, as we've been talking, so people will know, um, you know where to get this information as well. So Sandeep, thank you very much. We really appreciate this information to share. It's super important. Pleasure's mine, Brian. All thank right. you so much. Thank you. Take care. Thank you.